Welcome to our Google Plus Hangout. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Google Plus Hangout celebrating Big Cat Week on Nat Geo Wild and the Big Cats Initiative for National Geographic. We have with us today several Big Cat experts. I'm Luke Dollar. I work with the Big Cats Initiative for National Geographic, and I'm a National Geographic Explorer. And joining us today, today are Boone Smith, expert Big Cat tracker and host of Nat Geo Wild's Man vs. Lion, Krithi Karanth, conservation biologist and Big Cats Initiative grantee, Shivani Bala, conservation biologist and Big Cats Initiative grantee. Boone's joining us from Wyoming. Krithi's joining us from India. And uh, Shivani's joining us from Kenya. Also, Derek and Beverly Joubert, National Geographic Explorers and Residents and co-founders of the Big Cats Initiative, are in rural Botswana attempting to join us via satellite. So we'll hopefully be hearing from them as well. Um, it's Big Cat Week at National Geographic, and today we're talking about the endangered felines with the people that are raising awareness to conserve them and are doing things to protect them. Um, Big Cat Tracker Boone Smith. Boone, can you say hello? Hello. How are we? <laughs> we're doing very well. Shivani, can you hear us well? Joining us via Skype. Hi, I can hear you. Excellent. Uh, Derek and Beverly Joubert are still attempting to join us from Botswana, and Krithi Karanth, you're there, are you not? Yes, I am. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Krithi. And don't forget, everyone at home, we want to hear from you. Post your questions on social media for our Big Cat experts with hashtag Big Cats, and we'll try our best to answer them. Uh, first, let's start with a little bit about what the Big Cats Initiative, or the BCI, is. The BCI is National Geographic's program to support conservation and protection for big cat populations worldwide. Now, these are uh, lions, tigers, cheetahs, leopards, pumas, snow leopards, uh, etc. And it's also an assessment protection and communication program around the big cats with the goal of protecting them and stopping their global population decline. It's currently in its fifth going on sixth year and the BCI has provided 65 grants to field conservationists in 24 countries around the world. Uh, a few metrics that, that may bring this um, need to bear are that lions have disappeared from 90% of their original habitat. 90% of the world's population of lions have disappeared, many of whom in the last century. There are fewer than 3,000 tigers left in the wild. Africa, which is home to a billion or more people, is home to less than 10,000 cheetahs. Uh, jaguars and leopards, for example, are hunted for their fur. Derek and Beverly Joubert push National Geographic to found the Big Cats Initiative to not only report about what's going on with big cats around the world, but to also do things to make a difference. And everyone we have here today are fine examples of exactly what's going on in the field all around the world to protect big cats. And that's what we're celebrating this week on Big Cats Week at, Na at National Geographic. Um, we do have a question first from one of our viewers. Annalise Fuchs from Switzerland wants to know, how did you all become big cat conservationists? You guys have a variety of backgrounds. And so, Shivani, let's start with you. How did you become a big cat conservationist? Uh, Luke, for me it was a childhood dream and passion. I saw my first big cat when I was eight years old, and it happened to be in Samburu. I've never forgotten that. I've loved the big cats ever since I was a child. Um, I pursued education in wildlife conservation. I moved up to Samburu 12 years ago to start working with lions. So for me, it's been a dream of mine since I was a child, and I just persevered and got where I am today. Wow. And Krithi, how about you? Well, I saw my first tiger and leopard by the time I was two because my father is a tiger biologist and I got to track tigers and leopards when I was eight years old. So I fell in love with big cats as a very young child and much later on decided that this is what I wanted to do with my life as well. That's fantastic. And Boone, how about you? How did you come to love big cats and, and work to protect them and learn more about them? Um, my story is not too um, different from the rest. I had a grandfather and a father that uh, had me outside from the time I could walk, and it was tracks, animals, mountains, hills, you name it. Uh, they just were passionate about it. And so that love for the outdoors inspired me to go into work as a wildlife biologist, and that's evolved into a, a wildlife consultant and a, a capture expert and tracker now where I help a variety of 
of different organizations go out and, and radio collar and track these animals for research to, to get some really good data so we can make good decisions when it comes to these animals. So we've got uh, two multi-generational big cat conservationists and Shivani who came to it as a first generation big cat conservationist. Uh, that's fantastic. Boone, you're a fourth generation cat tracker. Um, I have to say that the last time you and I were actually together in one place, it was in South Africa uh, when Man v. Lion was being filmed. And one of the things that struck me almost immediately was you hadn't been in South Africa for more than two days trying to work with all the, 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 the game uh, managers there and the experts who live there year-round. This is their backyard. And by the end of day two, you were spotting lion footprints that they were missing. They were asking you about your thoughts of where they might be moving based on the lay of the landscape. And I've got to say that that was, that was really impressive. Um, what, were your, um, what was going through your mind when you first stepped uh, onto the Nambidi Reserve in South Africa? Um, you know, anytime you get to go a new place, um, there, there's always something a little bit of a little magical about it because it is it's new and it's discovery and and the adventure and I think that's part of the thing that I, probably draws all of us to is there there is some adventure and discovery there and and you know so to be able to go there and and you know gain a lot of information really quickly from the local guys and then be able to apply some of the other things I've learned along the way whether it be from lions African lions or even mountain lions or or, or leopards or things like that it, it was fun it was exciting because got to go out there and, and, and kind of put some of the field skills to work and there's some generalities about cats which which are great because they, they go across the board but then there's those unique individuals and I think that's what attracts us to all of the big cats is when we get there despite the fact that we can say yeah cats I'll do this this and this we get in other circumstances and they're so unique and individual and that's the fascination about it I think that's what draws us in and wants us you know helps want us to get out there and discover more that's fantastic Krithi, what's the closest you've ever been to a tiger? Uh, Ten feet, maybe. Ten feet. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, when, when, you're, when you're moving around in India, are you ever on foot in tiger habitat? Um, I've walked line transects um, to tiger and elephant country where, yeah, the chances of seeing them are low, but you come across them on foot, yeah. <laughs> And, and Shivani, um, the work that's done by the Owasso Lions Project, um, the, the, the warriors that are working with you, they're on foot almost continuously, are they not? Absolutely, Luke. Um, we have 15 warriors working with us. They all work on foot. Um, they're out in the field every day from dawn to dusk, following tracks of lions, um, keeping track of livestock to make sure they stay away from lions, and trying to work with the local communities educating them, talking to them about the importance of lions. So they do this on foot every day. That's amazing. I believe we may be connected with Derek and Beverly Joubert from Botswana. Derek and Beverly, can you hear us? Oh, I see where they're trying, trying Derek, to join are us. Are able to hear um, Luke now? I can... There's the voice of National Geographic's Big Cats Initiative co-founder and explorer in residence, Derek Joubert, along with his wife, Beverly Joubert, in Botswana. Derek and Beverly, can you hear us? Oh, I can see yeah. them. Oh, we may have lost them. Hey, yes, I can. Hello, oh, everybody. Excellent. Hello, Hello Derek. Hello, Botswana. <laughs> Hi, we can see you there. It's, 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 it's night. We can hear the crickets. Derek and Beverly are joining us via satellite, so the signal strength is quite low, as you might imagine. Um, Shivani, can you tell us a little bit more about what the lion warriors are doing in Kenya? Um, so, Luke, when we started the program, um, I worked with one warrior, my assistant, Jenneria, um, and he was only about 21 years of age when he started working with me. And after a couple of years, he said, you know, the warriors, the young men, the young Samburu men, they're out in the bush every day. They're the eyes and ears of what's really going on in this area. 
And he said, let's bring on, let's bring them on board, let's train them, let's educate them, talk to them about the importance of lions, and see if they, they can be wildlife ambassadors in this region. So, um, Janaria started this program. We started with five warriors, now we have 15. Um, they not only provide security for people and their livestock, but they're also providing security for all wildlife now. Um, they reduce conflict, they encourage the communities to protect their livestock better, they educate them, they talk to them about the importance of lions, and they, they're, real, they're real champions, real heroes when it comes to conservation. Um, just in the last couple of days, we've lost so many cows to lions. Twelve cows have been killed by lions just in the last couple of days. And the warriors are out there making sure that no one retaliates, no one goes out and tries to kill the lions because we really need them. We need them in Samburu. And the warriors play such a key role in that. So they have been very, very busy in the last couple of days dealing with these issues. And Shivani, we've just got a question for you via social media. Um, speaking of, of losing livestock like that, um, is this the largest threat, retaliatory killing for loss of livestock to lions in Africa? And um, what can be done to prevent that in addition to the warriors speaking with local communities? Um, sure, Luke. There are, there are two main reasons why, why we're losing lions so quickly. One is habitat loss. Lions are just running out of space. And secondly, yes, it is retaliatory killing. For the local Samburu people, livestock are their livelihood. So when a lion comes along and kills their cow or their camel, there's a lot of anger and resentment about this, and often they will go out and kill those lions. But now, work, you know, with the warriors going out and working with the communities, they talk to them about how to better protect the livestock. So if, for example, the cows are being kept in, in livestock enclosures, which are called bomas, they, they encourage them and talk to them how to make better bomas, make them reinforce them so it's much more difficult for lions to get in and difficult for livestock to stray out at night. So better husbandry, improved bomas, these are really, this is really key to reducing conflict from happening in the first place. If no livestock are killed, no lions will be killed. The Samburu people are amazing. They do want to live with wildlife, but it's when they lose so much to lions and other carnivores, that's when they want to go out and kill them. So keeping the livestock better protected is really key to their survival. So Shivani, you were, you were born in Kenya, and uh, uh, Derek and Beverly, you are also native Africans. Can you, can you tell us, Derek and Beverly, having spent your entire lives in Africa and your entire lives dedicated to the protection of, of big cats, first by uh, filming them and, and learning more about them, what drove you, what, what, was, what was the inspiration to, to move from just appreciating big cats in the field to what the Big Cats Initiative is today, Derek and Beverly. Well, Luke, I don't know if you can hear us here, yes. but uh, we'll give it a try. We're sitting out in the in the dark here with lions behind us, so uh, let, let's see how this works. Um, I think what originally drove us was was this appreciation of these, these animals out in the wild, uh, these magnificent animals that are really the iconic uh, creatures of Africa, big male lions in particular, and then seeing them disappear. Um, unlike in Shivani's area where there's no trophy hunting, we grew up in an area in Botswana where there was trophy hunting up until this year. And uh, we were seeing these beautiful big male lions being shot every few days. And I think that turned us into into advocates and, and probably um, fueled our obsession and passion for this. And through all the time of um, Derek and I filming, and that's over a 30-year period, you know, we've had a chance to actually get to understand um, these uh, creatures, both leopards and, and lions, and they all have individual personalities. They are individual characters, just like us, and uh, those in 
when you're, you know, that we had with um, a leopard, we just had to be in the ambassadors. And um, so our films um, are ambassadors. The creatures um, in the films are ambassadors. But we knew that we had to take action. And that's really why the Big Cat Initiative was founded with the geographic. Thank you. And, and Beverly, I'm noticing... I know we are a million miles away, and I know that um, you're battling to hear us, but I really hope you can hear us out in the darkness. Yes, we can. Beverly, I'm, I'm noticing the magnificent shirt that you're wearing, and Derek, I read an article that you penned that appeared just yesterday about leopards and leopard prints. Could you tell us a little bit about the overlap of, of leopards and leopard fashion? and what the future may hold. That's right, Luke. Uh, um, the I think we may have lost uh, Derek and Beverly there, but uh, to describe this this uh, this post that Derek had, uh, um, you know, as I said, I think in the article that in the beginning I really worried about the fact that uh, people were using faux leopard skins, and it was becoming so popular down to about fifty thousand now. And when Beverly and I were born, that number was 700,000. So we have to pay attention to each one of these big cats now. But, but we are celebrating right now a leopard in this area. The female is called Amber, um, you know, because of her beautiful amber eyes and her coloring. And three weeks ago, she gave birth to an individual uh, little cub who is absolutely incredible. He's, we're not sure of the sex right now, but this little thing has been tucked up in a Kigelia Africana tree. So we really are excited and we're going to you know, follow um, this little cub's life, hopefully. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to see more about that. Um, Krithi, uh, what kind of um, leopard protection and leopard threats do you experience in India, Krithi? Oh, I think uh, leopards are in serious trouble in India because most leopards don't live in forests like our tigers do. So I think most leopards are found in sugarcane fields. We found them in you know paddy fields, and so there's a lot of conflict now with um, leopards living amidst people. But there's every time a cow is killed, there's retaliation, and then um, these mob scenes take place where the the government or the police or the forest department is really not able to deal with these moms and their leopards either being, uh, end up being horribly injured or stoned or burned to death and this is becoming pretty common if you read any Indian newspaper today there's always some leopard incident being reported across India. It's a fascinating thing that, that leopards are one of the, the, the most geographically widespread of the big cats going from southern Africa all the way to southeast Asia but I've yet to hear a report of anywhere that leopards appear to be just doing just fine and people cherish and protect them universally in any individual area. Um, Shivani, how often are leopards the culprits of livestock theft uh, in Samburu? Um, actually, Luke, they're the, they're the, most, they're the biggest culprit. Um, leopards and hyenas cause the most problems. Um, they're the ones who kill livestock often, especially now in the wet season we will have um, conflict incidences with, with leopards almost every day. So definitely leopards and hyenas cause more problems than the lions do. Now, Derek and Beverly, I hope you can still hear us. Um, would you agree with, with what we're hearing here that leopards, in fact, may be the most persecuted of all the big cats? Um, look, which one do you say is the most persecuted? Would you agree that leopards may be the most persecuted, even though they may be the most geographically widespread? Ah, yes. Great. I think we're still. Yeah, definitely, because um, specifically because leopards are able to 
um, go further and further and closer into civilization. So you find leopards now 11 kilometers outside of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're then running into all of the things that that uh, civilized man has, mainly dogs and cats and sheep and goats. So um, very difficult. Leopards are living right, as, as they are in India, right up against the, the uh, frontier, so to speak, of civilization. And so there's quite a lot of conflict with leopards, we find in certainly much more than with lions. Thank you, Derek. Um, speaking of the technology like the satellite technology we're, we're using to uh, continue to try and stay connected with Derek and Beverly in Botswana, um, another piece of technology that conservationists use are camera traps. And Krithi, you've uh, been using camera traps quite extensively in, um, in India, have you not? Yeah, the WCS India program now has been camera trapping tigers for almost tigers and leopards for almost 20 years. So I think that certainly is one of the longest-running science programs um, uh, focused on big cats in the world. And what we found is that it's it's very easy to identify tigers and leopards through their stripe patterns, making it very cost-effective to cover very very large areas where. Um, we, you know, we can't wake a collar and track individuals, but really get um, very accurate estimates of population sizes of both these cats across the Western Ghats and other parts of India. Now, we have a question for you, Krithi, from Dipanjan Mitra, who posted on Facebook, what is the future of the Bengal tiger in India, with the forests vanishing so fast? Um, the future, uh, I think, has to be bright, has to be one that we fight for simply because India has, you know, 40% of the world's tigers. And um, I think, yes, tigers are in serious trouble. They've disappeared from over 93% um, of where they were historically in Asia. They've disappeared from 70, almost 70% of India. But they're still holding on. And I have seen places where tigers have come back with effective protection. And, and monitoring of trade, tiger, and it's basically getting boots on the ground and making sure poachers don't get to them and they have enough prey to eat. And we've seen tiger populations that were completely decimated 50 years ago recover in parts of southern India. So I am very, very hopeful because India has now the resources, the money, and the technology to save tigers. Now I think it's a matter of will and getting the best people you know, to focus on this rather than get, get distracted by all this extra stuff that's going on. I wish they would do the same for leopards. You know, we have 600 crores devoted to protecting tigers. We almost have nothing for leopards. So this is the, this is, I'm glad you brought up the leopard issue because there's a clear, you know, every tiger, every tiger gets so much more attention than the leopards. And it's not like we have a lot of leopards left. I mean, we don't even know how many leopards we have in India. It's somewhere between five and 10,000 left. And we lost wow. the cheetah in 1960, so big cats are in pretty serious trouble. And lions, we have less than 400 lions left in India, you know. But tigers get all the attention, deservedly so, but we need to talk about all the big cats right now. Great. Uh, as a follow-up to that, Krithi, we have a question from Emily Earhart from Nepal, who has asked, although camera trapping helps to monitor tigers, what additional steps are being taken to stop poaching, since that's one of the biggest threats to the tiger population? I think um, um, local efforts, including just include having enough protection at every wildlife reserve, having boots on the ground, having people being out there in the field every day monitoring the stuff. I mean, people have talked about introducing drones, but the forest cover is so dense, it's really hard to pick up poaching from drones in a context like India, whereas in Africa, I think it would work much better. So it still comes down to having people um, driving around and walking around and keeping an eye on poachers. And then wildlife trade is massive. The pressure from, you know, particularly China is still rampant. So um, all the tiger bones and skins seized in India are not really domestically consumed. This is for a large commercial market with less than, less than 3,000 tigers left. There's immense pressure. Each skin has huge value in the, in the, in the global market now. Wow. Boone, can you tell us a little bit about the technology that you use to track cougars? Um, yeah, I mean, this is the really cool thing about today's day and age is, is technology changes so fast. I think about 15 years ago when I started, 
Um, this was the this was the standard piece of equipment, a VHF uh, radio collar, and it emits a signal. We have to go out and we actually locate that every day. But now with GPS technology and the other changes, um, we're I mean, we just we put a collar out Saturday, in fact, and this is a collar that is going to get a location every hour. Um, and when you start to think about how you can piece together the movements of an animal from where it beds to where it hunts to the habitat use. All of a sudden, we can paint such a different story to things. And I, I look at the things that we now learn. You know, cougars have been really well studied throughout the United States. I mean, we know a lot about cougars. But now we've not only got GPS collars, we've got incredible camera technology. Um, the things that I see now on cameras when we put them up on kills, the, the social behaviors. And this is the animal we're supposed to know the most about, cougars. And I'm seeing things I've never seen before, I've never heard of before, I've never read about in papers. And so technology's made it a really exciting time, I think, for for all of science and research. Uh, it gives us a great opportunity not only to learn more about it, but with the, the video and camera technology, we get to showcase it. Data's becoming visual. And I think that's exciting because it's not just dots on a map anymore. We're able to showcase the, show, the social structures and the intimate moments. And I think that does a great job for getting people excited about the cause because now it's not just words on paper. We're seeing it. And people see that and go, wow, that's incredible. How do I get involved? And so I think we're at a time better than ever before to, to make a difference in the big cat world. Shivani, uh, one of the things that struck me was, was how text messaging is actually helping to protect lions in Kenya. Can you tell us about how texting is actually a big cat conservation tool? Um, sure, Luke. Uh, so we have a program called Lion Watch, and uh, some of our guides um, who are in the park in the protected area every day, every time they see lions, they text us and they tell us what's going on with the lions, who they see. They know all the names of the lions after they've received some training from us. And um, they all have apps on their phones, so they can actually record this data. And we can be online, um, and we can see what they're seeing. So because so much of our efforts are outside with the community, um, getting this information um, daily from these Lion Watch guides is fantastic. Um, we've got 20 guides now, all trained, sending us text messages every day and recording data on who they see and where they see them. So it's fantastic. It's got, you know, we've, we've got this great network that's really working well in Samburu. Um, everyone excited and enthusiastic about the lion population there. So we've heard about camera traps, we've heard about drones, we've heard about radio collars, we've heard about text messaging. Derek and Beverly, you are visionaries in the big cat conservation world. The Big Cats Initiative exists because of your vision, and thousands of big cats worldwide are protected because of the implementation of your visions. If you had to reflect and project on technology in the future for big cat conservation, what would you like to see? Oh, it's a good question, Luke. It's a uh, broad strokes. I think that what we would like to see is a generation of of kids coming up that um, start talking more about how we can coexist and live in harmony with big cats. Um, I think that good boundaries will help that, but really and truly, it's the kids that are going to help us most. Um, we at the moment we're in the in the bush and here. We've got um, uh, one of our camps that we've closed down and we've got a whole lot of kids in. These are kids that come from a demographic where their parents are most likely poachers. And we're running this conservation camp at the moment, talking to these kids. And it just is astounding how when you see them, they arrive on the first day and they get exposed to big cats. We were with them with lions this morning, actually. And uh, they terrify. Um, and they hate the bush, and it's, and it's that thing that's against them. But after three or four days, they're full of smiles, and they that more and more we should be reaching out to the children, and the children will have that amazing ability to influence their parents. And so we're going to be spending more and more of our time dealing with kids, in particular kids, street kids or, or, or kids in Botswana or, or in Africa in general that, uh, that are of the lowest 
uh, income groups and probably born into poaching families. And I think right now we really do um, our optimism um, continues purely because we see we're starting to see and hear that many of the other African countries might follow suit. But if they're not going to follow suit, then they are listening to the content of this karma. And uh, so that also gives us hope. It's, it's really from, from the bottom up, which is what we're doing now, with, but still working very very closely with uh, uh, of political leaders um, who obviously can make sweeping and all the warriors out there, everybody from India to Kenya um, and in, in Botswana and every single country, that we actually can't be complacent. We do have to continue the work because whenever you, we, I mean, whenever any of us, um, you know, uh, sort of hesitate trying to open up hunting vision or posts or the that is one that we feel we have to be a lot more aggressive in is getting that awareness campaign in Asia so that the children in Asia can make the conscious decision to change those ancient cultural beliefs in utilizing you know all animal products from shark fin to lion bones to tiger bones that is really what we have to eradicate right now thank you Derek and Beverly um, I have a follow-up question from you that's come from Ali Case, who's with us on Google Plus right now. Your careers take a lot of dedication, which is much appreciated. What keeps you inspired? Because this is a challenge. This is a constant, lifelong challenge. What keeps you inspired? I believe that what has kept us inspired is truly being able to um, have the connection with these incredible creatures, and um, uh, you know, it's 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 the, the energy of what we're seeing, and also not actually knowing everything out. There. A film that we bring out, we've managed to bring something um, new and exciting to, um, to the world. So I think that really is what is inspiring us more than anything else. And certainly, yeah, I mean, And we have faith. We have faith in humanity to do the right thing at this point. Faith is a strong factor, that's for sure. Boone, how do you stay inspired? Um, I think Derek and Beverly nailed it. I, I think the idea of, of <laughs> discovering excitement and something new and the, what the individuals bring to the game. And, and it's, you know, after, as, I mean, everyone here has a lot of years of experience and to know that you can go out tomorrow and see something that you've never seen before and you've never witnessed, that's exciting. I mean, that, that's the whole part of the adventure and discovery. And, and then you have an animal that uh, is so dynamic in a species as far as big cats, and they're so dynamic and they bring us... So I mean, we gain so much from watching them do their thing. They're majestic, they're incredible, they're inspiring. And, and I think it's an easy thing. I don't think it's hard to be inspired when we deal with big caps. I think as soon as you put yourself out there to be involved, it just naturally happens. And Krithi, what sort of challenges and renewals do you experience in India? Oh, it's so hard to see tigers and leopards. I, I mean, every time I go out there, just, just the opportunity to even hopefully get a glimpse of one of these cats is enough. I, I mean, that, that's good enough for me. And, um, you know, three years ago, I took my four-year-old and I saw her see her first leopard, and she stood up jumping around saying, "I saw my first leopard." And to me, that moment keeps coming back over and over and over again. My dad, my daughter, and I 
seeing this one female leopard for about 20 minutes and there are many many moments like that to keep you going. Boone, have, have, have your children been with you on uh, cougar captures? They have, um, and that's exciting. It's exciting to pass that on to the next generation from just the tracking to, to being able to be out and see the animals and gain an appreciation and understanding for what they do. And, and I think I, I loved what uh, Derek and Beverly talked about, about the kids in the next generation. I think that is so key and so important that we need to, you know, it, we're, we're all going to, play our game and it's going to be done at some point and someone's got to replace each and every one of us and carry the torch and, and to have young people go and be inspired. I've, I've been so fortunate to have the opportunity to be part of the National Geographic Sister School program where they link a, a, a couple schools in the States to schools in Africa and, and go to the stateside and meet these kids and see just the chaotic excitement of how contagious it is to get involved with big cats. It causes the awareness, and these kids go nuts for it, and it, it's so cool to see because it's when you see from first grade to, you know, a senior in high school inspired and wanting to make a difference, that's a pretty neat thing. And Shivani, we were, we were speaking just before we went live with this Hangout, and you were telling us about what you were doing yesterday, which was remarkably similar to the kinds of things that Derek and Beverly are doing several thousand kilometers to your south. So, Shivani, can you tell us what you were up to yesterday and, and how that helps keep you inspired? Uh, Luke, this week has been incredible. We've held um, our Lion Kids Camp, and this is about inspiring children to become the next conservationists. Yesterday and today, I got to show children their first ever lion. Their smiles, their faces, the excitement that they, they had when they saw their first lion, that's what keeps me going. That's what inspires me because I know these children are the next conservationists. They're the next wardens, tour guides, and leaders in, the, in this area. Um, just seeing their faces really is what keeps me going. And, and secondly, my team, my incredible team in Samburu, seeing how they risk their lives to save lions, just seeing how they've grown in the last few years, they're absolutely amazing. And every day they inspire me to keep going on. So I'm very lucky to have a great team. I'm so fortunate to be able to take out kids to show, show them their first ever lion. That's why I do what I do. It's because of who I'm with. That's fantastic. Shivani, thank you for spending time to join us from Kenya today. Krithi, thank you for spending time to join us from India today. Boone, thank you for spending time to join us from Wyoming in the USA today. Derek and Beverly, as we bring this hangout to a close, are there any final messages or parting thoughts that you would like everyone to take with them as we, as we finish up Big Cats Week later this weekend? Hmm. Well, you know, Luke, you were saying earlier on what, what keeps us inspired, and I have to say that the people on this call keep us inspired as well. Um, so it's really, you know, just so fantastic that, uh, that everybody takes the time to do these calls and, and get involved in the Big Cats Initiative. Um, week is, is one of those moments in the year where you can put everything together and create some sort of event around Big Cats and, and have people start the conversation again. Um, basically what we do is we create films that start conversations and we hope that people pick up that conversation once the film is finished. So uh, we're very encouraged and of course want to thank everybody for supporting the Big Cats initiative. Clearly something that's, that's uh, very close to our hearts. And and knowing that um, everybody's going to be watching Game of Lions, um, we've really just had a very emotional scene unfold in front of us a couple of um, uh, weeks ago. And uh, it's, it really uh, it depicts what lions have to go through out in the wild. We, you know, we think that it's all easy, easy for them. And it truly it took us 30 hours to film this scene. And at the end, I had tears rolling down my cheeks, but at least this time it was tears of joy. Well, when, when I mentioned... <laughs> <laughs> 
when I mentioned just a second ago that we were going to, to talk about final thoughts, we were absolutely buried with questions uh, on social media that all came in almost at the same time. And, uh, and, and so uh, one of the questions that came in, however, came from someone on this Hangout, one of the, the folks that's with us, Boone, actually asked, Shivani, Boone wants to know, can he come to your camp? <laughs> Please come and visit us. You will love it. The warriors will love having you. It will be an amazing experience. So please welcome anytime. Peru is incredible. Kenya is incredible. I encourage all of you to come and see us and see what we're doing. That's great. Um, many of the questions that just came in are from people asking about what they can do to get involved. But also, uh, I'm curious to know if you guys have any additional questions for each other. So uh, let, let's, let's, let's go through the lineup really quickly uh, about what you think people can do to get involved and if you have any questions for one another. Boone? Um, I, you know, I, first of all, I just want to say I think this is such a great thing to, to be able to participate in this with everybody because everyone does such unique and amazing things. Um, you know, everyone's kind of involved in a, in a different uh, arena to support big cats and their cause. Um, so maybe I'll just throw it out as a, a generic question to everybody because everyone kind of knows what's going on in their own, own arena there. What's next? What, what, what is the next thing that has to happen in, your, in each individual area where you're working to, to be able for big cats to take that next step and make a move in the positive direction? Krithi, what would you say is next for you? Um, I think uh, we need to come up with conservation solutions that work, and I see technology playing a big part in that. Like Shivani, we're field testing a, a, a program where people can call and call into an 800 number from villages in India reporting conflict, and then we have field teams going to help people file for compensation. And although it's in very, very early stages, we're getting overwhelming responses from villagers who don't have electricity, who don't have schools, who don't have health care, but they have a cell phone, and they can call in and tell us what happened. And I do, I think, you know, urban Indians take pictures of tigers and um, get on social media and say save tigers but really the people we need to be working with are the people living next to tigers and leopards and lions and I think the solutions have to focus on on people living with these big cats Shivani what are your thoughts um, absolutely as Kriti said the you know the future for wildlife is in the hands of the local people who live with them We've worked out methods and ways of how people and lions can coexist in, in a small part of Samburu. And now for us, what's really important is to take it to new areas in northern Kenya, work with the people where lions are being killed, and really just you know use what, what's worked in our area, expand it to new areas, and encourage people to live with lions. We know it's worked. Our population is stable now. People have accepted the presence of lions. It's up to us to take that to areas where it's more difficult and people have not accepted lions. So that's the next step for us is engage more warriors in conservation, engage the Samburu community, work with more children, work with women. We started working with women this year and it was absolutely incredible. So for us, it's, it's really important to continue doing that and that'll, that'll be the next step for us. Derek and Beverly, what is the big cat? Go what is the big cats initiative going to look like moving forward? Hmm. Well, you know, I think Luke. I think that the the two big problems with big cats and and their future, uh, so we have to fight both of those, and so. I think the Big Cats Initiative is going to um, be tackling both of these in the future. Um, certainly, I would like people, we, in reply to what people can do, obviously we need the funding, but I think people have to uh, lean forward on cats and big cats. Cat would certainly help fight the ignorance that's floating around us all the time. Obviously, dig our heels in when it comes to greed. I don't think that there should be a place for 
trophy hunting of big cats today in Africa. And everybody's got a voice and everybody should, should speak out about that. Um, but the other thing is that I think people around the world should reach out to people inside of Africa and just share the appreciation for big cats. Very often people in Africa wh who live with lions on their doorstep don't appreciate them and can be helped to appreciate them more if people around the world, children around the world, reach out and just let people in Africa and then I believe we really do have to lobby harder. You know, we've all been trying to get um, lines on CITES to Appendix 1, and of course it still hasn't happened. And I, and that is, you know, one thing we have to do. We've just got to keep um, the lobbying going, but we also have to be a, to try and stop um, any animal product going into any country. So, I mean, you can still take, you know, safari trophies. That should be stopped. Um, as well as many of the European countries. And, uh, you know, if we could do that lobbying, um, I believe we'd be able to stop a huge amount of the killing that is happening in Africa. And then, of course, we've got to look at um, Asia again. Uh, Derek and I um, are really working very hard in, in trying to get um, a foot in the door to be able to speak about these problems. And we believe that we have just to Beijing in April to be able to start the discussion. So, and I think that's what it is, Luke. It's, um, I think the Big Cats initiative for us is going to change gears and move to a level where uh, we take on real issues, bigger issues, and, and get more involved in advocacy and conservation, real hard conservation. Derek and Beverly, thank you for that. Boom. Shivani, Krithi, Derek and Beverly, again, it's an honor to share time and hear from all of you. We're about out of time. Everyone at home, I'd like to thank you for joining us. And don't forget, you can continue the conversation with hashtag Big Cats. And don't miss the rest of Big Cat Week on National Geographic Wild. I'm Luke Dollar. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And goodbye.